Hi everyone and welcome to day 7 of Cave Miss. I wasn't actually going to do an introduction uh, for this video but I felt as if I have to explain a few things. Today the 27th of December is a, a, a difficult day for me and it was a year ago today that I had my sheepdog Mist put to sleep. So this is purely a selfish video. Um, I think it's been quite cathartic as well. But the reason for it is that Mist dying last year was the catalyst for me to start drawing. And the reason for that was that I wanted to be able to conjure her up whenever I pleased if, I'm, if I was missing her. And obviously you have photographs and things, but it's nice to be able to draw your pet. So that is actually what started me drawing seriously and that the sole aim of me learning to draw and doing art stuff was to be able to draw my dog. And I decided just to put my big girl pants on about two weeks ago and start the drawing. So she was a, a very underestimated and slightly misunderstood dog, but she was my dog. She was my sheep dog. She was my working dog, but she was also my pet as well. And I just wanted a bit of a fitting tribute to her. And drawing this picture of her has been very emotional, but I'm also actually quite proud of it. The fear was because there is an emotional attachment that I might not be able to capture her properly. It's very, very difficult when you know the animal. Um, and I didn't start it for that reason for such a long time because I didn't think I was good enough. However, I just really wanted to tell you her story and let you see how far my drawing skills have actually come in the space of just under a year. So it is a bit of a sad story. So if you don't like that kind of thing, please don't watch the video. As I say, this is actually a very selfish video, but it's something that I just had to do. Uh, today is a rough day for me and I'm just trying to kind of I suppose I'm using this as a coping mechanism, but anyway, I hope you enjoy my art and I hope you enjoy the story time about Mist. So um, I'm going to roll the rest of the video. Go on! Right, Mist, you fetch it. Mist, fetch it. Go get it. Oh, I can see it. Go get it. Go on, Tilly. It's a cow, Mist, where is it? Check. Come on, check. Come on, tell. You know where it is. Good girl, missed. <laughs> When my husband and I got together, our first port of call, we were both fresh out of university, was to go and work on a farm together and run the farm together. And we got a job which we didn't think we were going to get and there were a lot of sheep on that farm. So at that time we didn't have a sheepdog at all. And we also had absolutely no money. We were both students and, um, you know, the, the, the finances were tight. So not only did we need a dog that could work straight away, but we also needed a cheap dog that would work straight away. And those two things don't go together. Um, sheep dogs that have been trained or even partially trained are very expensive. So through a friend of a friend, we found this gentleman who had dogs that were a bit reasonably priced. And I found out why when I arrived to pick her up. Now, I did know this gentleman. Um, let's just say I would never buy another dog from him, but we were absolutely desperate. And I went and picked up this dog and he said her name is Mist. She is 18 months old. She's had a litter and she works quite well, but she still has a, you know, a bit of learning to do, but she'll do enough for you to, to let you start working your sheep. So I picked up this dog. She was filthy absolutely dripping in muck and all sorts and of course I'd just had a, a towel on the seat of the car and um, she I, I got her into the car and she looked so frightened she was so thin and I just took one look at her and I thought you poor little soul I'm going to look after you 
So I took her to my mum and dad's, which was the closest place um, from where we'd picked the dog up. And my mum and dad's face when I let her out the car, it was just like they were dismayed and they thought exactly the same thing as me. So we gave her something to eat, which she inhaled. And she got back in the car and she just looked at me and she looked at me the whole way and I was trying to figure out what, you know, whether she was frightened or whether she was okay. So it was about two and a half hour car journey back to the farm and the whole time I just tried to reassure her, you know, spoke to her in a really sort of calm voice and used used her name and I stroked her little paw and she sat with her paw on top of my hand when I wasn't changing gear in the car and she sat and just looked at me the entire way back to the farm and thus the, the bond was uh, was created between myself and this dog. So we had, we had a few issues to begin with which you're always going to have especially if you don't have a dog from being a pup. Um, she had really really bad separation anxiety for the first month or so and um we we tried a variety of things you know because we had Tilly as well we had the Jack Russell at that point um she's been there since the day dot so we tried to sort of keep her with Tilly for company rather than locking her in a kennel outside which is how our dogs became inside as well as working dogs which isn't again isn't the norm for farmers but Anyway, that's an aside. And uh, one day I had gone out to the shops and I had left Mist in the living room. We had a sort of work room. We called it our dirty room because it's where we came in from outside and we, you know, we would sit with our overalls on. We'd take our wellies off, but we'd sit with our overalls on. And I came back from getting the shopping and it looks as if someone had sprinkled confetti all over the workroom. Uh, Mist, in our, our sort of anxious state, had decided to tear up some books. And what I forgot was that on the bottom row of the bookshelf was my first edition signed copy of one of Terry Pratchett's early Discworld novels. And it was in a million bits all over the floor of the workroom. And uh, yeah... I couldn't give her into trouble, I really couldn't, but I was so annoyed at myself for having that on the bottom shelf and not thinking about it. So that was how our relationship started. And uh, she <laughs> she was a good working dog and she picked things up really quickly. So, you know, it didn't take us long to get going with her and she really trusted us and she trusted us from the very beginning, which was so nice. And uh, the the story of her learning to, to work, uh, you know, that's kind of long and weary, but one, one incident that sort of sticks out in my head was one evening where we were trying to move a group a large group of sheep over several fields so we had to go through four or five sets of gates to move them from where they were to where they needed to be and my husband had said to me he said let me try and work her because what had been happening was he would start working with her and if I appeared or she saw me she would just stop what she was doing and you know, abandon all the work and just come running to me because she wanted to see me. So this was kind of like us experimenting with her, going with Mr. Jem and not staying with me all the time because she needed to work for both of us. So we were taking the sheep across this sort of steep hill, but we, were, we weren't we running up and down the gradient and the, of the hill, we were running across the way. So I was down at the bottom part on my own and Mr. Jem was up on the slope of this hill with a quad bike and with mist herding these sheep and it was going really really well we were kind of pushed for time because we were starting to lose the daylight it was the sun was setting and it was during the winter so we really wanted to get done and she was going absolutely great guns she was doing exactly as she was told she had all the sheep in a nice tight group while she was moving them and she wasn't hassling them she was just pushing them along and uh, all of a sudden she just stopped and all the sheep started to run about and in, at that time, we had no mobile phone signal where we were. So I'm I'm shouting up to Mr. Jem, what's happened? And <laughs> there was silence for a second or two. And then his voice just floated down the hill. She's taken a dump. <laughs> so Mr. had obviously had the, the need had to come upon her. And she just stopped what she was doing and stopped to have a poop. So needless to say, we had to go and round up the sheep and start again. But we got there eventually. When we moved, uh, we moved back to the West Coast, which is where I'm originally from, and obviously Mist came with us, and we again had a lot of sheep um, at that farm as well, and that was when Mist lost her eye. She did have two eyes when we got her, and uh, she had a, a run-in with a ram, and she had an abscess in her eye, which 
is treatable sometimes um that can be co caused by trauma and she her eye had sort of clouded over and sometimes it's a sign of infection so we'd taken her to the vet and the vet says oh she's got this abscess so we were given tablets and things for her and that night it burst and she was in an awful lot of pain so we pressed her back to the, the vets and the vet said, unfortunately, you're going to have to take her eye out. So when that happened, we were quite worried about if she was going to be able to work after she'd had her eye out and if she was going to want to work, you know, whether it would knock her confidence, obviously not having the vis vision that she had, but also the fact that it's been caused by working with sheep. So I picked her up from the vets and her eye looked horrendous where they'd, well, her socket looked horrendous. It was all stitched up and it looked like barbed wire they'd put through it and it was all swollen and it was quite stressful. And the vet said to me, you're going to have to keep her really quiet. She's not going to want to eat anything. So just kind of look after her and, um, you know, keep her quiet, keep her warm, give her a cuddle and see how she is in the morning, see if she'll eat something. So I took the dog back home and we got we got into the house and she seemed quite bright and, and she was like that. She was a happy dog all the time. Mist was happy about the entire world all the time. Her tail never stopped wagging. She was just a really enthusiastic dog. And uh, I thought, I'll maybe try and give her something to eat just to see if she'll eat anything. Well, I put a bowl of food down to her and just like the first day when we got her, she just inhaled it. So that was good. So I trotted through to sort of set up a bed for her, you know, a little blanket and whatever. And the next thing is she <laughs> she comes through with the tennis ball in her mouth and she's wanting to play. And I thought, there's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> and that losing her eye wouldn't, did not affect her whatsoever. She was neither up nor down. So she did really, really well. After that, she went on to have a litter of puppies with Jock, which is the sheepdog that we still have. And we see some of their offspring on quite a regular basis. So that's really nice as well. And when she was pregnant with the pups, she she changed a little bit. Um, she became very protective. In our household, if someone knocks the door, the Jack Russell barks. And when she gets to the door, she stops barking. And she's always done that. Now, we had never had a peep out of mist. I'd never heard her bark ever until she was about eight and a half weeks pregnant. So she was quite close to giving birth. And one day she just started barking and it was the postman and she liked the postman. We knew the postman well, being in a rural area. And after that, she became very protective of her territory, obviously very protective of her pups, but strangely protective of me as well. And that that change was quite interesting and she could be quite intimidating because she would go up and she would be an inch off someone's face and she would bark at them if they came onto the property but she would never bite them she would never touch them and when I called her off she would stop and I just thought that was it, it was kind of strange um I had some surgery shortly after that and she was stuck to my side like glue she did not leave me so I think she knew she sensed that there was something wrong um and I just think she had this sort of instinct and we had this link between us. And, you know, that was obviously the bond that we had. And that was really, really nice. But she was very much a people dog. She did. She wasn't keen on other dogs other than obviously our own dogs. But she was such a loving dog and she just adored people, even though she would bark at them if they came into the, you know, into the property. But I always say that with Mist, if... If she could climb inside you to get closer to you, she would do it. She's always sit up beside you and she wanted to be near you and touching you. And I think that neediness came from the fact that we'd rescued her in inverted commas, you know, and we gave her a, a much more plush and fulfilling life than where she was. Um, And I think that she appreciated that, maybe. I don't know. But she was a very, very loyal dog and... I say such a loving and affectionate dog as well so that was that was really really nice um and that that's one of the things I miss about her the, the other thing about Mist was that she didn't have gears I would say if you ever watch a sheep dog when it's herding they will adjust their pace and what they're doing depending on where they are and how they're moving around the sheep mist basically was on or off she was either a million miles an hour or asleep there was no in between so even if you took her out with a tennis ball she would run herself ragged for about 15 minutes and then she would just like collapse in a heap in the middle of the field and you know pant away for the next 10 minutes and it was very 
difficult to control her and and control her enthusiasm when you were working her, uh, just because see, she was just like a million miles an hour all the time, just absolutely full of beans. Whereas more sensible sheepdogs will pace themselves in case they have to, you know, go for a, a a burst, a short burst of speed. And Jock's very good at that. Mist was not an elegant dog. And I have no idea how she managed to coordinate those four limbs to round up sheep. <laughs> Even watching her, I mean, she, she often um, tripped up the step. We have a step up into our lounge and she quite often tripped up the step, you know, going into the to the lounge. And I think to myself, how, how we ever got you working is an absolute miracle. <laughs> But she was, uh, yeah, she was, she was really funny with stuff like that as well. Um, she was just an entertaining dog. So when Mist got sick towards the end, um, she'd had a lot of stomach problems, and we found out she had the dog equivalent of IBS, which is very treatable. Um, she was only seven years old when she was diagnosed with that, and basically she got thinner and thinner, and sicker and sicker. And we found out she'd had a very heavy uh, bacterial infection on top of the IBS type situation. And basically, we think that the, the damage caused by that infection was just beyond repair. You know, our body wasn't capable of dealing with it. And we got to the point where she was thinner than when we got her. Um, and we just made the decision that it wasn't fair on her. We tried everything. I mean, we really did. We we went through surgeries and different types of food and one thing and another, and it really wasn't getting better. And I was literally watching her melt away in front of me. And because she had been such a thin dog, I, you know, I didn't want that for her, but I also didn't want her to get to the point where she was, you know, she was so ill and she was literally, you know, there was nothing left of her. So her stomach had been quite settled for about three days before Christmas and we thought that we'd found something that was working and she stayed with us you know Christmas day and Boxing Day and then she just went downhill so rather than leave her to suffer or get to the stage where she was very very ill we made the decision to put her down while she was still happy but she she was very very thin uh, when she was at the peak of her fitness, Mist weighed roughly about 15 and a half kilos. She was never a, a big, big dog. And at that time, this time last year, she was 11 and a half kilos and you could see all her ribs. So it was a difficult decision to make because she was still happy and active. Um, it makes it harder to make that decision, but I didn't want her to suffer. So we had her put down on the 27th of December because there was literally nothing else we could do for her. We had exhausted all avenues and it just wasn't fair on her. So the the thing that upset me wasn't the fact that we put her down. <sighs> Sorry, guys. It was the fact that she was so young. She, uh, it's funny because I always said she never came from a particularly good breeding line. We knew that. Uh, and I said right at the start that I, I didn't think she would ever live to be an old dog. I thought that she was never going to see double figures. But to ju have just turned seven, um, that's very, very young for a, for a collie not to be here anymore. So that, that was what was hard about it. And that's what still upsets me. Um, but I still maintain we did the right thing. And I tortured myself for such a long time over it. Did I make the right decision? Did I not? But I think we did. And I'm just really grateful for the time that I had with her because she was awesome. She was my favourite. She went everywhere with me. And you know, that, that's that's never going to go away. I'm always going to have those memories. Um, but I haven't really... I, I think about it every day and obviously I miss her and it gets easier as time goes on. And uh, I'm just really glad that I have been able to draw this picture and catch her the way that she was happy and the way that I remember her. So, yeah, um, that's missed. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I hope that you think I've done a good job with the picture. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope that you have enjoyed this video and that you will join me tomorrow for the next day of Cavemas, which I promise will be a good bit cheerier. If you have enjoyed this video and my drawing, then don't forget to click the subscribe button and check out some of my other videos. See you tomorrow.